some things are meant to endure. Your 1966 Chevy 2 is one of them. A tough, durable, practical automobile, it was designed to give years of maximum service at minimum cost of upkeep and operation. How well has Chevy 2 lived up to its original promise? Listen to the voices of the people who know. First, a Chevrolet Proving Grounds engineer. In the 35,000 mile durability test, Chevy 2 came out with the least repairs of any of the 39 competing cars. A Chevrolet service department engineer. Ever since Chevy 2 first came out four years ago, its warranty and policy costs have been consistently lower than any other car under Chevrolet warranty. But for the most telling comment of all, let's go to San Diego, California, where the Yellow Cab Company operates a fleet of 140 Chevy 2 taxicabs. As you know, one of the worst things that can happen to a car is to become a taxicab. For cabbing is a continual round-the-clock endurance run. 60,000 miles a year of grueling stop-and-go driving that goes on and on until the car literally falls apart. How are these 140 Chevy 2 cabs standing up to the brutal punishment of taxi cab service? Listen to Charles Pratt president of San Diego Yellow Cab Company. We're extremely happy with the Chevy 2. We've used them now for four years. We've had good driver and passenger reaction to them, and they have stood the gap real well. What about operating costs? Well, operating costs are substantially less than the standard model car for several reasons. One, we have a longer brake life. Car weighs a lot less, so we can get by with a different licensing fee, which is a substantial saving to the operator. Good gasoline economy, of course, is a big factor also. Well, how do you think Falcons would work out in taxi cab service, Mr. Pratt? Well, I don't know from the things we hear from other operators around the country. Nothing compares to the Chevy 2 as far as our costs are reflected. Are you going to continue buying Chevy 2s, Mr. Pratt? Yes, I just ordered 40 more of the 66 models. Listen to Ross Dowers, shop foreman, San Diego Yellow Cab Company. The Chevy 2s are averaging around 140,000 miles before a major overhaul. Some of them have gone 200,000 miles before we've even had the head off. Listen to the drivers. Well, the Chevy 2 is a real first-rate car. It gets you where you're going, and it's important. You don't make money standing on a street corner waiting for a tow truck. You've got to have a car you can depend on. Like a Chevy 2? That's right, like a Chevy 2. Sure, I like the Chevy 2 fine. It handles like a baby carriage. That's important, too. You ain't so tired nights. Let's face it, it's a hell of a car. And that's the story told by the people who know. Though Chevy, too, is more beautiful this year than ever before, though it ushers in whole new dimensions of style and luxury, it's still the car with the unmatched record for toughness, economy, and long-lasting durability. Demolition Derby. This is part of your 1966 Chevrolet selling story. For Chevrolet value, Chevrolet resale, Chevrolet guts and strength and dependability run long and deep and far into the life of an automobile. Till cars get to here, and till cars get here. Six million cars a year end here. Since Chevrolet has outsold everybody over the last decade by wide margins, you'd think more Chevrolets would be scrapped. But just the reverse is true. More Chevrolets keep running, giving service, while more Fords wear out and come to the end of the line. The actual scrappage figures for a recent period present a very startling picture. 
1956 Chevrolets scrapped, 184,000. Fords, 302,000. 55 Chevrolets, 289,000. Fords, 375,000. 54s, 241,000 to 380,000. 53s, 381,000 to 455,000. In a recent seven-year period, over 595,000 more Fords were scrapped than Chevrolets. The reason for that isn't sentiment. It's value, basic, fundamental Chevrolet value. And now, today, in Chevrolet's best tradition, the full-sized Chevrolet lineup, extended, amplified, and spearheaded by the new Caprice models, represents the greatest value the automobile marketplace has ever offered. Now let's get specific about features and proof and product sell that you can use for your 1966 Chevrolet. First, that incomparable Chevrolet ride. Nobody in Chevrolet's class has matched it yet. Chevrolet's sturdy frame and full coil suspension give it a smooth, solid, road-hugging ride that none of the others can approach. Just look at the difference as a Chevrolet and a Ford come over this ride. The Ford's wheels go clear off the ground while the Chevrolet's remain solidly planted on the road. That famous Chevrolet ride was never better. To prove it, show your customers the balanced coin demonstration. It's a real test of Chevrolet ride. Chevrolet not only rides better, it has a shorter turning diameter and quicker, more responsive steering. Try that with a Plymouth VIP. Inches difference gives Chevrolet a real advantage over Plymouth. Here's a test to demonstrate a Chevrolet quality advantage. Try it first on a Ford LTD. Now try it on a Caprice. That Caprice body is solid as a rock. Here's another demonstration proving that Chevrolet quality is more than skin deep. Heavy sound deadening insulation under the hood of the Caprice. None under the hood of the Ford LTD. None under the hood of the Plymouth VIP. Again, Caprice quality where it counts. Now another test. With sensitive sound metering equipment set up outside this Ford LTD and a microphone inside, we're going to try an experiment. With the door open, the sound level, as heard inside each of the three cars we'll be testing, is a little over 0.9. With the door closed, the sound level on this Ford LTD drops to 0.2. Next, the Plymouth VIP. With the door closed, the sound level again drops to 0.2. And now the Caprice. With the door closed, the sound level as heard inside the car drops to a trifle over 0.1. Nearly 90% of the outside noise has been sealed out by the extra soundproofing in the Caprice. Anybody can build a more powerful engine if he doesn't care how much gas it uses. But Chevrolet does care. Here's a test to give you the lowdown on fuel economy. Each car will use exactly one gallon of gasoline. Caprice with a 396 cubic inch engine, Ford with the 390, Plymouth with the 383. All three with automatic transmissions.
they will stay together. Identical conditions, identical speeds, averaging 40 miles per hour. So watch those gas bottles and remember what you were told about that new 396 cubic inch engine in the Chevrolet. How its design was way out ahead of every other production engine being offered today. How it breathed deeper, had straighter passageways for both intake and exhaust to increase its efficiency. Now see what that means in fuel economy. it for the Ford. There goes the flip. But the Chevrolet, with that new 396 cubic inch engine, is still rolling right along. For the Ford, it's 13.1 miles on a gallon. For the Plymouth, it's 13.6 miles. For the Chevrolet, it's 15.7. Two and one-tenth more than Plymouth. Two and six-tenths more than Ford. Chevrolet leadership gives you so many advantages. And one of the biggest is price, for instance. 53% of Caprice buyers used to buy these cars. Pontiac, Buick, Mercury, Oldsmobile. But people changed over to Caprice because they found they could get everything they wanted for literally hundreds of dollars less. Chevrolet brings you so many features, it's impossible to cover them all. Magic mirror finish. Inner fender skirts, ball race steering, flush and dry rocker panels, double wall cowl, fork type door locks, bonded brake linings, full coil suspension, self adjusting safety master brakes, and many more. One factor that sells cars is performance. And man, have you got performance this year, especially with that 396 cubic inch turbojet engine. Match it against Ford's 390 cubic inch Thunderbird engine and watch what happens. Look at the way the 396 moves out to an early lead and holds it right through the run. And don't forget that 396 turbojet is exactly the same engine that just trounced the Ford in economy. And now, as a fitting climax, a 66 Impala Supersport with a high-performance 427 turbojet challenges some of the highest horsepowered cars on the road today. Buick Wildcat, Pontiac GTO and Grand Prix, Old Starfire, Ford LTD and Plymouth VIP. And here they go, Chevrolet leaving them all in the dust. example which demonstrates that what you've seen holds up and reproves itself in any kind of competition is Chevrolet's sweeping victories in the 1966 Pure Oil Performance Trial, 
We won in every class we could enter. Beat all comers. Caprice beat a Buick LeSabre 400, Pontiac Grand Prix and Dodge Polaris. Corvair 500 outscored Rambler American, Ford Falcon, and Dodge Dart. The SS 396 swamped Buick Grand Sport, Pontiac GTO and Oldsmobile 442. And one of our SS 396s won 28 out of a possible 30 points while our second entry was piling up almost as sensational a record. Corsa scored a convincing victory over Mustang and Barracuda. Well, there you have it. You've seen the full impact of your Chevrolet story for 1966. You've seen the impact that's built into Corvair, Corvette, Chevelle, Chevy 2, Chevrolet trucks, and Chevrolet. You've seen the selling impact that's possible when you put it all together and punch it home. And that, after all, is the impact that counts, the solid substance of fact, impression, and persuasion that you put into your selling to make you the kind of quality salesman with the kind of quality salesmanship that makes people say, yes, that's impact. <laughs> Thank you.